All right. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Andy Fleury. I'm founder and CEO at Alcatrader. Uh, here with me today is uh, Jonathan Dakin. He is a VP Strategic Accounts at uh, Fireblocks. Good afternoon. So yes, we're going to talk about uh, what does a bank need to offer crypto custody and crypto trading to its clients. We heard a lot about the regulation today and things that are far in the future, but what we're going to present here today is real. You know, we're going to give you some real life examples and suggestions uh, and, you know, what does a bank need to get started uh, with this. But let's start with a, a quick introduction um, about our two companies. Um, so Algotrader is a Switzerland-based uh, fintech software company. Um, with our product, uh, Wireswarm, we provide an order and execution management system for both uh, traditional assets and um, digital assets. So we uh, integrate with many of the uh, liquidity venues and support uh, trading of all these assets. Um, we're based in Zurich, but we have offices in Singapore and uh, New York. We're a typical uh, fintech startup. We have, uh, we're backed by investors like uh, Credit Suisse, Blockchain Valley Ventures, Investire, and uh, New Capital. What you see here, um, so this is our product. Uh, this is the main UI. It's a, it's a browser-based application, and it basically shows you, you know, everything a professional trader needs, like uh, charting, uh, order handling, market data, transactions, and so forth. So good afternoon. I'm Jonathan Dakin from Fireblocks, and you know we're a security technology company. Um, that's used by, these figures are slightly out, uh, about 120 customers globally. Um, and they use Fireblocks to transfer about $22 billion worth of digital assets between each other every month. Um, you know, so that's companies like Revolut and Celsius, some of the most scaled organizations in the digital asset world. Um, and they use Fireblocks to issue transfer and settle digital assets across the entire market. And the sort of use cases that they, um, they use Fireblocks for are everything between trading, which I hope we can bring to life today, but you know, custody, lending, um, you know, and you know, electronic securities you know, across, across the market. Glad I pressed the right button there. And so our platform works via API, so you can do that completely in an automated way. But this is the UI view that, that you will see when you um, turn on Fireblocks. And on the left-hand side is your governance layer with all the policies um, in the middle, treasury management for over 300 uh, types of token and 18 protocols. And crucially, on the right-hand side, and this is what we've come here to talk to you about today, is the delivery of those assets. So we have a network of over 120 participants that are trading between each other, using Fireblocks to deliver and settle those assets live in an immediate basis. So let's get started with the main topic. So why would a bank uh, want to offer uh, cryptos to their client? Basically, what's, what's the business case um, for a bank? Um, what you see here, um, that's a, it's a collection of some very good reasons. Um, you know, first of all, the, 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 the bank can ex, ex, uh, expand its, its client base and its services with this new, that we all know, highly uncorrelated asset class. Um, it's a new source of uh, revenue stream uh, for the bank, which is, you know, basically independent of uh, classical capital markets. And actually... Um, for a bank to start with, with cryptocurrencies is a very good exercise to prepare them for the future when finally uh, security tokens will come to life and will become tradable on secondary markets. 
As you all know, um, you know many people uh, hold cryptos today, especially the young generation. And let's be honest, um, banks have always been specialized in safekeeping assets for their clients. So for a bank, it's actually very natural to also offer um, custody for these new digital type of assets. And last but not least, uh, you know, a bank can also uh, brush up its its image on the market uh, and foster this this uh, you know the image of a, of a, a new innovative uh, bank. So this is exactly what we see in the market. You know, this is a massive opportunity for the banks to add services around a new asset type, and that's what's really crucial for them. And first of all, they go out into the market and they look for custody. But you know, where, where Firebox comes in is not only the custody side of things, but how do you build out the services that are actually going to en enable you to monetize that custody? And we're actually doing a presentation on this uh, tomorrow. But what the banks really need is that ability to use custody, integrate that into their core systems, and you know, the governance and processes, things like KYT and AML, but then bring out for services for trading, lending, and what have you. And you can see that you know, amongst some of our customers. Um, you have people like Celsius who've got, I don't know how many wallets we'll find out they've got tomorrow, but about you know, a million wallets. But they've originated at the beginning of this year about $16 billion, $6 billion worth of, of loan origination. So it's a very exciting market if you get it right, but it's about finding and I've heard this a lot today, financial infrastructure to make this happen. And that's what I think we can talk about today. So let's uh, look at it a bit more in detail. Um, so what are the actual components a bank would need to build such an offering? So besides the uh, core banking system uh, the bank already has, bank will need a solution for uh, custody and storage of private keys. Then they will need something for uh, treasury and liquidity management. So basically to transfer assets uh, to and from custody to the external uh, venues. And actually uh, Fireblocks here, they got both. They got custody and the transfer and it's one of the best solutions out there. And then last but not least, uh, the bank will need a solution for trading and execution and connectivity uh, to all these venues. And that's what we do at uh, Wireswarm. And if you look at those venues that Andy just had up there, we, we connect all of them, whether it's exchanges um, like Bitstamp or source of liquidity like B2C2. Um, they're all working on the Firebox network. But you know, what do you actually need for a, you know, a, a successful um, asset transfer network? Well, first of all, you need participants in it, right? And we've got that, whether you, whether you need um, you know, our 120 customers, or you build your own sort of private network using, using Fireblocks to do that. And the idea is that actually throughout your whole delivery process, that's insured. And also that it, you, it's protected in the traditional cyber and hacking way. You know, from operationally, it makes it very easy to deliver your assets, but also they're protected from, from a security perspective. But what else do you need on the network? You actually need to be smart about the way you deliver things like DVP and PVP. And can you settle in, in fiat as well as in uh, digital assets? And these are the features that the Firebox network delivers for you. So if you're trading with, with organizations, you can actually, instead of having to pre-fund all the exchanges that you're working on and all your counterparties and connect to the source of liquidity, it's already done for you. So you can deliver your asset immediately to the, um, to the uh, counterpart counterparties that you need to trade and settle with. So um, how can you actually uh, access uh, crypto liquidity? And to be honest, that's not that simple. Uh, main reason is the fragmentation of the crypto landscape. Um, you can basically look at the crypto landscape as a, as a huge network of liquidity producers, so that's the, the exchanges, and liquidity um, consumers. Um, 
unfortunately, many of the players don't actually uh, disclose their true source of liquidity. So for a bank to achieve uh, best price executions for their clients, the bank will need to tap into this network at multiple places and compare prices before sending an order. Unfortunately, this connectivity is not easy as well. The bank would have to um, build, maintain, operate connections to many of the venues out there. And in addition, they would need to build and operate an order and execution management system. Unfortunately, um, there are no common standards in the crypto space. Every exchange, every venue has a different API, a different protocol. So this is where we come in with our solution, Wireswarm. We provide a single unified uh, fixed API to the most liquid and most regulated venues out there. And as some of you might know, FIX is actually a standard that most banks know very well. Let's dive a bit deeper and uh, compare the different types of venues out there. There's actually a lot of confusion around this topic. Let's start with exchanges first. All exchanges require you to pre-fund the account before you can trade. And that's a big problem for most banks because of counterparty risk. Luckily here, um, Fireblocks, with their instant uh, transfers, allow you to transfer funds immediately to the exchange right before uh, you place an order. And that limits counterparty uh, risk tremendously. Some exchanges do offer uh, credit lines, uh, but they're very hesitant with that. You need a long-standing relationship with the exchange to get into those credit lines. Um, fees have dropped quite a bit, so um, you know typically they're in the range of zero to to uh, 0.25 uh, percent. Some exchanges like Coinbase also offer OTC trading, so they have an OTC desk. Uh, and one thing a bank has to be specifically uh, careful with is the fiat transfer, the fiat settlement, as international transfers through the SWIFT network can take days. Next up, um, brokers. Um, so brokers don't require you to pre-fund the account, so you can trade an, a broker uh, on, a, on a post-trade settlement basis. Most brokers offer both agency and uh, principal trading. Um, on the cost side, um, there's quite a bit of a, a difference. Um, Typically, they're in the range of uh, 0.5 to 2%. It actually says 1.5 to 2%. That's, that's actually the Swiss brokers. They're in that range, but internationally, we're a bit lower. Um, Bitcoin Swiss, as you might know, a big player from Switzerland. Uh, they're probably one of the largest brokers globally. They process about a million, a billion uh, per, per month. Um, also, something to consider is um, APIs provided by brokers are quite new and not as reliable and as mature as some of the other uh, vendors. Um, last is, uh, is market makers and uh, OTC desks. They also support post-trade settlement on a, on a DVP um, basis. Uh, and again, most of these market makers are integrated with the uh, Fireblocks network, which um, simplifies um, settlement um, tremendously. Um, fees are typically um, also uh, pretty low. They're, um, you know, typically the cost is included in the spread and is below uh, 10 basis points. Um, last thing I want to mention uh, from my side is the difference between best X and OTC trading. This is something to consider as well. Uh, with best X, you uh, basically use components like uh, execution algos to split up large orders in combination with smart order routers to automatically pick the best, uh, the best venue for you. Um, with RFQ, uh, you send requests to multiple venues uh, to provide provide you with a, a quote to buy an asset, um, and then you can basically compare the quotes. We uh, 
with our product, we uh, actually support sending out RFQs automatically and select the best quote uh, also automatically. So uh, the difference is that with RFQ, you know beforehand what you're going to pay. Unfortunately, this uncertainty comes at a cost. The, the market maker will price that into the spread. Um, so if you're in a hurry, you know, use RFQ. Otherwise, our recommendation is to use Best X. It'll be cheaper in the long run. So I'm relying on you to press the buttons. So it's very unfair of me. So, um, so I just want to talk to you a bit about the evolution of custody. Okay. So, um, and I think some of this is fairly obvious, but especially around the trading perspective. Um, so, you know, what's what, what's the most secure thing, right? It's, it's cold storage because you know it's completely air gapped. It's not connected to anything. You know, and, and that's fine. But in a, in, a, in a trading world you literally can't take a position on a particular trade that you want to make if it's going to take you 24 hours to get your uh, asset out of custody. So people started working with multi-sig, which is you know, great and, 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 and secure, but actually not very operationally efficient. So if I get somebody new into my operations team, I have to go and rebuild my wallet infrastructure and change the addresses. So that, you know, that's very difficult. And also, you're paying for everything because it's actually happening on the blockchain. Right, so you know, you set up a new wallet, it's going to cost you, you know, very costly. So we've seen multi-party computation, MPC, you know, really come to the forefront, which is something that we do. Um, but actually, you know, if you, if you look at MPC itself, it's actually not a, not a particular silver bullet because actually it, it can be you know, very quick. But actually, you still have to secure that in hardware. You've got custody, and that's great. But actually, how do you deliver and settle? Uh, those assets out to the market that you work with, and how do you do that instantly? You know, and you're still in this business of, I have to somehow find a way of getting my um, funds onto onto uh, whatever um, exchange or venue you're using, and how do I settle that? And you know, all these things did for you to build. How do I secure that in hardware? Well, I've got to buy HSM. That's that's small things that I want to uh, build. So. Um, Firebox is a, a little bit different. We lead the way in that, we think. So we've introduced a new um, MPC algorithm, MPC CMP, which is our own algorithm, but we've given it to the entire market and open sourced it, so anybody can use it. Um, it's secured in very scalable hardware of Intel SGX. But the crucial thing uh, that I think in, in this discussion is actually we have that network that gets your the, the, the funds that you're trading and, and the assets that you're trading out to the trading venues and settling with those trading venues. And that's the real re unique uh, with Fireblocks. So I, I just want to talk you through a, you know, a, a quick sort of banking or neo-banking um, customer scenario that we, we, we've recently um, implemented for um, a small company called Revolut that you may or may not have heard of. Um, and, and I think this is kind of crucial in the stack. You know, what, what do you need to be successful uh, with, with digital assets generally as, as a bank? So first of all, we provided um, treasury management around very secure wallet infrastructure. I think I've only got one minute to go. That, is, that, that, that basically supports all the blockchain protocols that the, the bank is going to use and can, be, and can be integrated via API to automate many of the processes that the bank have not just from, from a point of view of automating the delivery and DVP out to the, the venues they're working with, but also working with core banking, AML, KYC, and actually having the transaction control to do things around you know, the, the movements that you're making. So for instance, if your KYC picks up that there's a problem with, with an incoming or outgoing uh, delivery of, of assets, then that can be frozen. And you know, finally, you know, how do you actually get the assets out to the counterparties that you're working with? But also, there's a retail flow here. So how do I connect and allow Mr. and Mrs. Smith to withdraw and deposit digital assets as well? So all of these sort of flows are you know, incorporated into, in, into the, the platform and enable the, the business workflows that make the bank money. I think what, what we're going to summarize and, and say is this is available to you right now. Okay, you, you, you can take advantage of this, um, and both systems are you know, available straight away for you to work with, instead of actually having to build the building blocks yourselves.